Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Kashif Kamran and today I'm conducting a session which is about the SBL December 22 exam results. This is basically a post result review session and then to identify the next step forward. Now the results are out. It's almost like six days since the result are announced. I'm conducting this session on the 22nd of January. So the results were announced on 16th. So probably uh, the cool down effect uh, must have taken place by now. Now, all of the students who have passed their SBL exams in December 22, uh, many congratulations to that. But this particular session is for those who were unable to get through the SPL exams. And I'm looking forward to what should be your next exam strategy. So welcome to this post result session for SBL December 22. And let's investigate the reasons why students fail and what exactly the student should do for their upcoming exams in March or June. Now, when the results are announced, uh, the first 24 hours or the first few days are very difficult for students because particularly uh, for the ones who have failed uh, to investigate why have they failed. And this is the most uh, difficult thing uh, the student needs to undertake and mostly student don't undertake it in a very appropriate manner or they never undertake it. Now, most of the time, uh, even after two days have gone, three days have gone post results, the students are still trying to identify why the marker or the SPL examining team has failed them. And they are in that illusion that they have done a wonderful paper. They've done an excellent paper. Uh, they were expecting around 60 or 50 or 55. And unfortunately, they have got 47 or 44 or 41 or 35. And they've not gone through. Um, and they are in that shock. Uh, and that's where the problem is. That rather than uh, you being in shock, for your result, uh, you can be in a state of shock for like a day, but then you need to sit down, need to understand, need to evaluate that where things went wrong for you in the December exams. Because till the time you are not taking the next step, you are not moving on to the step to evaluate your weaknesses, and you are stuck at a point where you're just, uh, where you're just, repeating that why am I failed? Why am I failed? This is not the way forward. You need to find the weaknesses, right? So this is an investigative session and probably would benefit you at the end of the day in terms of finding the right strategy. Now, the very first thing is to look at the pass rates for SPL. Uh, nothing much of a surprise in the passing rates. On average, we know the SBL passing rates are 50%, and that's exactly uh, what we saw in the recent results for December 22, almost 49%. Uh, the preceding exams in September, the same passing rates, 49 So nothing uh, strange, nothing unusual uh, investigating the passing rate. So that means uh, almost in every two students who sit the exam, one of them pass. So that's quite a good looking passing rate for a strategic uh, level paper at for ACCA. Now, even if you're not passing, even if you're not among the 50%, uh, then there is something wrong you are doing and you need to learn, you need to understand uh, what exactly the students are doing who are getting through this paper uh, in the first exam setting. If you have any of your friend, uh, any of your colleague uh, who has passed SBL recently, I think uh, you need to have uh, a session with him. Uh, you need to have a session with your mentor, uh, your teacher uh, to find out where things went wrong for you. Uh, the marking process, uh, the checking process is an independent process, is an unbiased process. So uh, the sooner you come out of this uh, issue that uh, why I was failed, should I go for an administrative review? Uh, because I think students uh, spend their time uh, 
after results are announced in asking questions about more about administrative review. So I think you should come out of that and you should uh, rather plan your next upcoming exam sitting, uh, which is more critical, and you should uh, focus your attention and your energy on the upcoming exam sitting. So this is a passing rate, good looking, encouraging, and that should also motivate you that uh, 50 percent passing rate is, is a good looking passing rate. Now, even if you're not passing, then uh, it's about time that you should take the next step. Now, taking the next step is the most important thing here because six days have gone by, the results are announced. Uh, and if you have not yet decided what you are doing for March or June, or you're still in a lost phase or a lost phase of mind, uh, it's about time that you, you get up uh, face the challenge, face the world, uh, and uh, failure is just a new, uh, failure is uh, a new beginning, right? So take it as a new beginning, and uh, you will be successful in your upcoming exams. So taking the next step, what should be what you should be doing? The very first thing uh, is to decide between March or June uh, whether you should be appearing for March or June if you have flunked in December exams. Now there are two equations here. Uh, if you are uh, if you have failed for the first time in SPL paper, this was your first exam sitting right in uh, December, and being your first exam sitting, you flunked, um, and uh, you flunked into forties, anything in forties. Uh, I would prefer go for March. Because you know everything, uh, you know the structure, you know uh, how to study, uh, but again, you just need a fine tuning and I'll be guiding you on the fine tuning shortly. But that fine tuning and the amount of time you have, you have almost like six weeks before exams. So I think this is good enough time to fine tune and convert your 40s into 50s. So ideally should go for March. But for, for students who are struggling to pass SPL for like two attempts and three attempts, and they're still struggling to get through and they're getting marks in like 40s and 30s and they're not getting through. If you have an opportunity and you are not in any hurry or any other issues uh, and you can ideally skip March and opt for June would be better because that gives you a breathing space, a time to sit down interact with your teachers, your mentors, find the best strategy, uh, uh, do a more practice of past papers, uh, try to identify your weaknesses. And in that way out, you can uh, better prepare yourself for June. So uh, anyone who gave the first exam sitting in December, the first sitting for SBL, and you eventually uh, flunked, uh, I think you should attack March, considering your marks were in 40s. If your marks were in 30s, uh, probably, uh, again, if you have an opportunity uh, and you can skip March, then skip March. If you have scored like 25, 30, 35, I think there is a lot lo lot to be done for improvement. It's, it's not just the fine tuning, it's broader than fine tuning. So should go for June. Uh, and again, if you, are, uh, if you are continuously failing in SPL, despite a good looking passing rate, uh, again, there is a larger problem, a bigger problem, which needs a proper investigation. And again, if you have an opportunity, you are not in a hurry, you can skip the March exams, then go for June. Uh, I know there are lots of financial implications, a lot of economic issues uh, facing the world over. And, and with the exchange rate parities, uh, with economic crisis worsening, uh, in certain countries, uh, 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 re-attempting re a paper, going for a paper again, uh, needs to be considered very wisely because you don't want to put the money again and get the same result. So I think you need to take a wise decision here, particularly if you are financing yourself or your parents are financing yourself, you need to take uh, the right step uh, and not uh, economically, financially, and even which is better for your future. So this is how you can decide between March or June, considering my perspective here. Now, once you have decided uh, that I'm going for March or June, you should also be considering the time left to take that decision. Uh, 
the standard exam entry ends on 30th of January, uh, which is eight days from now. And the last date for exam entry is 6th of Feb, which is two weeks from now. So uh, you still have a time to take the session. And I think within a day and two, you should take it because uh, the, the amount of time you're wasting in taking a decision, uh, you are decreasing the opportunity uh, which you can spend on SPL or the time you can spend on SPL, particularly if you want to go for March, every passing day uh, is putting a question mark on your preparation. So start your preparation as soon as possible. Take the right decision if you are if you want to appear for March because time is less and you want to utilize this six weeks in a more effective manner. So take your decision as soon as possible. March or June, look at your circumstances, your issues, your problems, your challenges, uh, your economic worries, uh, and then take the right decision how you should be going about for your upcoming exams. Okay, now you've failed, right? So you have failed, you have failed. Uh, nothing can change your decisions for December, your results for December, sorry, but you can do something which can change your results for March or June. That is to sit down uh, and evaluate your weaknesses. Now, SPL is quite a generic paper. It's quite a, a paper which is subjective uh, and lots of judgments, lots of decision makings uh, needs to be taken in the exam context in the perspective of a case study. Now, anyone who took the right decisions, uh, right judgments in perspective of a case study in that four hour long exercise and who kept the nerves. And uh, any student who lost the nerves, uh, lost the case study, uh, the first one hour of reading and planning time was lost. Uh, you did not grab, grasp the case study in the first one hour, probably, uh, one of the main reason why you failed in your SPL exam, because um, if you get control on the case study and the requirements and what to do uh, within the first 60 minutes, uh, you are on the right track to be successful. But even after one hour, you read, you plan. And when you come to the time you need to write, you need to execute, you're lost. Uh, you forgot uh, and you, you cannot recall anything or you need, to re, you need to go again into the case study. That's, that's where you're creating uh, the risk factor for you. Uh, and that's, uh, that's where you're going on the wrong track. So first of all, ask a question to yourself that how confident you were on the case study and the requirements and the absorption uh, within the first 60 minutes. That's the first question. The second question is that while you were writing the answer, how were you writing the answer? Were you writing the answer which was according to the expectation of the examiner? And I'll be dealing with that shortly. Uh, that what is the expectation of the examiner? What are key things examiner is looking for in your answer to reward you marks? Uh, were you able to meet that particular threshold while you were writing the answer? So one part is the reading and planning. One part is the writing. Uh, the, the, the time, the investment you're putting on the first, in the first 60 minutes uh, is really, really important for the remaining three hours. Because if any student lost track after 60 minutes, uh, you are going towards failure because you will be in panic. You know one hour has gone. And still, I can't understand the case. I cannot control the case. I still don't know what to do, uh, how to connect the exhibits with the requirements. Uh, and that's where you're spoiling yourself in, in the SPL context. Four hours is a very long time, right? To put yourself uh, in a calm mode, uh, controlling your nerves, controlling your emotions, uh, spending that long four hours in exam scenario. Uh, there might be some technical glitches which might be affecting you negatively, uh, but it remain, keeping yourself composed and calm is the key to success. So how would you go about evaluating yourself? Uh, can we self-evaluate ourselves? Because most of the students are very bad in self-evaluation. 
most of the students uh, uh, whenever they self evaluate them uh, themselves they find their strengths not their weaknesses so in that sort of a context uh, can self evaluation give you the right answer uh, if not then you have your teachers you have your mentors uh, to talk to and find and find where things went wrong or even my session uh, can give you something out of it i believe when you're evaluating yourself this is what you need to do you need to read the september december 22 examiner report which is now available and you need to read through uh, this examiner report uh, because this examiner report will tell you uh, something about the good students and the bad students examiner will tell you something about the stronger students and the weaker students examiner will give you some word of advice some suggestions for the future upcoming exams and that's where you can investigate where you went wrong you need to have a red and a green pen uh, while you're reading through the examiner report wherever you find a criticism of the examiner something the examiner is criticizing something where the examiner is talking about bad students weak students put that in red bracket underline and wherever the examiner is telling you something about strong students good students and examiner is giving you an encouraging feedback put that in green now that red and green analysis at the end of the day try to relate the red with you if you find few reds which are relatable with you you are identifying the reasons why you failed in your recent exams so i think that is one good practice you can do and that practice can give you opportunities can i help you identify the the do's and don'ts which you can really implement in a positive manner in your upcoming exams in march or june so evaluate your weaknesses in the reading and planning time in the writing time uh, evaluate uh, how you spend the 4 hour in the exam context because you are the best judge of what you did in the 4 hours uh, if you still fail to find then the examiner report can help you uh, finding some of your weaknesses so that sets number 1 number 2 if you are clear you want to go for march or june uh you are clear of finding some of your key weaknesses which led to a failure in the recent exams then the next step is to sit down with the right resources remember you are repeating the spl paper right you are not appearing in the spl paper for the first time you're repeating it and because you're repeating the spl paper uh you should refine your study resources let's see what are ideal study resources to sit down with uh, when you're preparing for exams uh, in march or june the right resources in front of your screen number 1 technical articles uh, and as a tutor i'm very fond of it uh, probably since i am teaching uh, the sbl paper uh from september 18 uh i never recommended books because i believe uh, sbl is a paper where you need to be conceptually strong you need to be conceptually uh sound to pass it because knowledge alone will not help you pass the paper or uh, just reproducing the knowledge will not help you pass the paper uh it's it's more about the blending of knowledge it's more about adaptation of knowledge is more about how you uh contextualize the knowledge uh in 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 the case study according to case study and and you put the best answer so that is where technical articles uh become important and you know there are technical articles on the website which have been categorized under the syllabus area a b c d e f g h so you know okay which particular area you are going through which is the best thing now when you're reading the technical articles that's the perspective of the examining team they will give you exam focus in every article they will tell you how this could be examined or how the examiner expect this to be examined or they tell you what the what the student should know number 
Number two is they will give you examples and ideas because uh, reading articles is, is easier because they're written in a tone which is uh, understandable by a student. If there is any difficult word, any, diff any difficult terminology, you can just go down on the Google, browse it and learn the, and understand the meaning. In that way, you're also building up your vocabulary. Uh, and you can you can use the same term in your exam paper to make uh, to put your answer in a more impressive language. So you have an opportunity. But articles are must. You cannot deny them and you cannot ignore them uh, over the books. Uh, to me, they are more important. So try to download the articles, make a file, uh, put them under the order of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and read through them, read through them. Uh, and when you're reading, keep a pen with you, just scribble on them. If you get some important points, just make a star, star, star. So at the end of reading an article, you can make a summary. If you're reading, a, if you're making a one page summary per article, and for example, you have like 24, 25 articles, you have 25 pages of summaries. That's, that's, that's the technical content. That's, that's the technical content you need as a knowledge for SPL. So number one. Number two, recent past papers. Uh, try to do the past papers which are more recent. Uh, I've seen students uh, investing in revision kits. Uh, I, I don't find any uh, benefit of that because when you have so many past papers, some of them are on the practice platform and some are not. But if you have past papers available from September 18, where the SPL started from and you take your journey from September 18 and you bring your journey down to September, December 20, 22, sorry. You have plenty of past papers. There are specimen exams uh, already on uh, the practice platform. So even if you do something like eight, seven to eight papers, the recent ones or six to seven recent papers, you're well prepared. Because in every paper you involve yourself, you need to ensure you are putting the right definition of a reading and planning time. You're putting the right definition of a writing time. You need to keep a timer, one hour, and the timer and the timer buzz, and you say, okay, end of the reading time, now let's start writing. You need to do the time barred exercise, one, three, one, three. And if you keep doing that one, three, one hour, three hour, one hour, three hour over the six, seven papers, you are refining yourself for the rare, real exam. So recent past papers, getting involved in the recent past papers, uh, getting through the recent past papers, writing answers for recent past papers. If you have an opportunity, sharing your answers with your tutors, with your mentors who can uh, check them, who can give you constructive feedback on them, that would be great. Reading examiner reports, particularly last three examiner reports, last three. If you're reading through the last three examiner reports, the way I guided you with a red and green pen, and if you read through the last three examiner reports with a red and green, and you can then uh, make a summary of the reds and the greens, the do's and the don'ts, and you gen then go through them and say, okay, uh, I'll not be doing this, the one in the reds. I'll be doing what is in the green. And I probably believe that will have a real positive impact on the quality threshold of your answer. If you can follow this strategy of mine. So your time investment in recent past papers, your time investment in uh, doing an exercise, keeping one hour and three hour and see how you're fitting things up in that context. Uh, reading examiner reports with finding the danger, danger signs, the red, the positive signs, the green, and bringing the best strategy for your upcoming exam setting could be very wise. Recent webinars. Uh, up to sept up till September 22, my webinars were available on YouTube channel. You can still watch them. I put lots of guidance on SBL on my YouTube channel. I hope you follow that uh, channel of mine and you know the amount of videos I put on SBL. But from December 22, I made my webinars paid. You need to make a, you need to make a fee payment to get through with them. And they were not publicly available. They were only available to registered students. 
uh, if you want to buy them, you can buy them as well. Uh, the, the buying process will start from the first week of February. Uh, and with the buying of the December webinar, it will be bundled with March webinar, which will not be publicly available. So you buy the Feb December webinar, and by the time you finish off watching the December webinar, the March webinars will be uploaded and you get double benefit of the payment you have made. Uh, I intend to do the March webinars by the mid of February. So probably you can buy the December webinars early and then you can start down with March webinars later. But the recent webinars will give you the way to write answer, the way to read, the way to plan uh, if you have not watched them yet. Because I believe the recent webinars uh, of mine will fine tune your mindset about SPL paper, particularly about professional marks, particularly about um, the marking scheme, because that sets extremely important. And then do the mock exam for uh, SPL, which ACC will publish on the practice platform. And I think ACC published the uh, mock exam ideally 10 to 12 days before exams. But you should plan to do it after the 1st of March. And I normally do a mock debrief. You can evaluate, self-evaluate your answer uh, from my mock debrief. Again, mock debrief will be available to the students uh, who will be registered for my webinar. They will get access to that. It is not a public uh, document. So these are right resources. Uh, you know yourself best. How you flunked, why you flunked, uh, what you did, uh, in the last exam sitting and look at the list of right resources and my perspective with every one of them. I hope you can better utilize them. So practice holds the key. But while you are practicing, particularly while you're writing the answer, you can cross match your answer with examiner reports. And, and I think that can bring a lot of benefit to you. So this is what should be on your table when you're sitting down and planning your upcoming exam setting, be it March or June. Now, finally, uh, I want to discuss with you some three very important things, which I believe is the key to success in SPL. Not, not the reading and planning time. I've put lots of focus on that in my webinars and my videos on my YouTube channel. But I, I, I'm focusing on the top three key to success for SPL which I believe is a cause of concern uh, when I look at student failing the SPL paper. The first one is adaption. I was just discussing this point uh, a few minutes ago that a lot of time the student read the BPP book and the Kaplan book, which has an overload of information. And you read and read and read and read and read the book and you that book gets here in your mind you learn models you learn theories there are so many models across the syllabus area there are so many theories across the syllabus area writers theorists and you learn them now on the day of exam when you are looking at the case study and there is a requirement about uh, Menlo metrics or Menlo framework, or there is a requirement about uh, power and interest of a stakeholder, something like that. Or there is a requirement uh, asking you the risk management strategies like the transfer, acceptance, reduction, avoidance. Or uh, there is a requirement asking you something uh, of a model like, uh, like the PESTEL analysis the macro environment analysis. And you just uh, put the knowledge you have about the model or you try telling examiner a background of the Menlo metrics or what is a power or what is an interest, but you're not relating it with the case study. You're not adapting the power in the context of the case, what the case is telling you about the power or which stakeholder the case is telling you. Or you're not relating the interest in the context of the interest of the stakeholder shown in the scenario. You're not adapting. A standalone knowledge or the knowledge reproduced in the paper is known as generic answer which will fail you in the SPL paper. 
If you want to really pass the SBL paper, the rule, the key to success is your adaption. You are not putting backgrounds. You're not defining the model. You're not explaining the model. You're not telling what the model do. You're not telling the examples of the model, what is special, what is political, what is economic, what is social, as if the examiner don't know about it. You are a strategic business leader. You need to adapt. You need to directly uh, start looking at the political factors given in the scenario. Or you should directly start looking at the stakeholders in the scenario and then identify their power and interest and conclude whether they are key players or keep satisfied or minimal efforts, etc. So till the time you're not relating with the case, your knowledge alone knowledge is useless. So knowledge is needed to a certain level, but that knowledge needs to get adapted in the context of the case, uh, the situation of the case, what the examiner is telling you in the long story given to you to read. And that long story will tell you how you should adapt the knowledge you have about PESTEL or Mendlow metrics or, uh, or the risk management strategy like transfer acceptance, reduction avoidance. And you try to find out that the approach taken by the management to transfer is right or wrong, or you are recommending management that they should transfer this particular risk and justifying why. So alone knowledge. And again, a lot of time the student forcefully try to implement a model in their answer when model isn't the best answer. Not every time the model is the best answer. You can, uh, if there is a question where picking up a model is difficult, and you solve that answer without a model, but you relate the requirement, the, 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 uh, the requirement, what the requirement is asking for with the case study, you will still get marks. Because I remember that when, the, when there was the first exam setting to SPL, that was in September 18, uh, examiner wrote an article after the September 18 exam setting was over because that was the first one. An examiner wrote an article, 10 things to learn from September 18th. And in that, examiner mentioned that model isn't the best answer. I've covered this on my YouTube channel. So if you try to forcefully involve a model when there is no model, or you believe that every requirement asked for in SBL, you need to put a model, you, put, you need to put a theory, you're wrong. Because not every answer needs a model. Uh, where a model is needed, that's very explicit. An examiner will give you a clear hint of that. But even if you do an answer without a model, you can still survive. Prob because you've given the answer in the context of the case, in the perspective of the case. So that's how you need to go about it. So that's number one, adaption. Number two, case absorption. The more you involve in the case study and you have one hour reading and planning time to get involved in the case study, to, to get into the case study, you have one hour to dig things out of the case and you relate them with the requirements. In my previous webinars, I've covered the technique of reading and planning, how you utilize that one hour to absorb the case here. In one hour, the case gets here. You are absorbing it. And the best advantage you get of a case absorption is that when you're writing the answer, your, your answer is reflective of the case. And that is something which impress the marker checking your paper. Because if the case is not absorbed in the first one hour, it will not be absorbed in your answer as well. But if the case is absorbed in the first one hour, it will definitely get absorbed in your answer later, which is important. So case absorption, right, holds the key. Uh, try to invest in the case, try to dig through the case, extract things out of the case, and then, then blend them in your answer. So if, you're, uh, the, if, if your answer gets blended with the case, your answer gets synced with the case uh, and your answer is connected with the case, you're passing. 
But if your answer and case are far away, what you're writing in the answer has no connection with the case, but has more connection with the books, you're failing. And if your answer has less connection with the books, more connection with the case, you're passing. I hope you understand the sense behind case absorption. And the last one, point development. Now, when you're, when you're writing a point, for example, you're writing a point on a political environment or you're writing a point on a power and interest of a given stakeholder in the scenario, or you're trying to tell uh, the management that this particular risk should be transferred, you're giving them a suggestion, you need to develop your point. And the SPL examining team do tell us that every good developed point should ideally be three to four sentences long, not no, not, not more than four sentences long. That is too big. And a, a, the SPL examining team don't like a point beyond four sentences long. A sentence is where you put a full stop. I'm not saying four lines long. Three to four sentences long is one good point or two to three in some cases. For example, you're telling that this risk should be transferred and why might take two to three sentences. But if you're talking about like a political environment, might take three to four sentences per point. And per point is two marks, two technical marks. Now, you can evaluate some of the examiner answers. We know examiner writes a lot bigger. So you should not get impressed with that. And you, know, you should not say, okay, I'll write this much. Because if you follow the footstep of the examiner in everything the examiner do in the answer, ignoring the fact that the examiner answers are tutorial guidance, you will fail. There are limitations of examiner answers. I don't know why students don't understand that. Why are they so much impressed with examiner answer and they even take the bad things of examiner answer. Examiner writes a lot because it's a tutorial guidance. He wants to guide you on every perspective. He wants to guide you that this, this was the right point, this was the right point, this was the right point, this was the right point. He's not telling that you need to write all of them. You need to see the marking scheme, how many points you need to write. So point development, for that, you can evaluate some recent answers of examiner just to see how he, how he develops a point, how he explains a point. Because if you are developing a point which is just like one sentence long or two sentence long, that's not worthy in SPL. It should be two to three or three to four is a better point development. And again, that point is to be picked from the case. Whichever point you're explaining is coming out of the case to make it a more valid point development. So three things to me, adaption, case absorption, and point development, which, which I believe is, is the key to success. There are so many other things. Your investment in reading and planning time, is very, very critical, right? Is, is one, of, one of another very important factor for success. So I hope this session uh, will help you decide whether you're going for March or June. The session will help you decide the right resources you will put on the table. The session will also help you decide how you can improve things in SBL as well. And particularly, you will be following my uh, YouTube channel for more guidance videos on SBL I've done in recent past. You can follow me on the social media uh, and you can follow me or uh, you can book any course at lms.kashifkamran.com. Uh, you can WhatsApp me at my given number on screen. Just the messages, no calls, please. You can follow me on the Facebook, which uh, where my academy is, uh, Kashif Kamran Digital Learning, which is KKTL, DL by KK. That's the Facebook page. And you can follow me on the YouTube channel, which is much more important, uh, youtube.com slash Kashif Kamran. So I hope you got some insights from this session on post result review of SBL. Uh, and I wish you all uh, the very best of luck for your upcoming exams, whether you're appearing for March or June or any other exams you're appearing for in March, not just the SBL. This is your tutor, Kashif Kamran, signing off from this uh, investigative session on post results for SBL December 22 from my setup, Kashif Kamran Digital Learning. Take care, goodbye, and Allah Hafiz.